بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير صدق الله العظيم There's a poem I'm going to read to you by by Nizar Qabbani, he says, I asked about Muhammad within your walls. I begged news of Jesus in your streets, O Jerusalem, swiftest path between heaven and earth. Swiftest path between heaven and earth. What this is speaking about is, this is saying, giving an indication of why Rasulullah was brought from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa first why he had this special meeting here and this stop here before going up to the heavens. According to Yaqut al-Hamawi, who's written Mu'jam al-Buldan, which is a dictionary of all the Islamic cities. Uh, it's in Arabic. And what he says is that uh, one of the things about Jerusalem is that this is the closest place to the heavens. According to some, it's where the door of the heavens is. So that's why he came in this direction. Allah knows best. When you're talking about Masjid Al-Aqsa, there's a number of names that we are going to try to clarify first. You hear about Masjid Al-Aqsa. You hear about Quds, Al-Quds Al-Sharif. You hear about Baytul Maqdis, Baytul Muqaddas, Al-Baytul Muqaddas and Baytul Maqdis. So you have all of these different names. What we're going to be discussing is that how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed this place, what he said about this place, what has been mentioned in the Quran about this place, and also how the people after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over the centuries have approached this place. So that inshallah we can understand the line and the tradition in which we're following. Because we're in the, in the century that we're in, the 15th Islamic century, after 14 centuries of people who have come and gone in this place through its various turmoils and difficulties, its various successes and glories, the different people that came in those times. We're coming at a particular time in history here as well. So this is a place apparently in which a number of prophets came here or at least close by. And that is according to the general classical opinion and the majority opinion. Though there have been doubts raised about this recently, which I'm going to be looking into a bit more. But I think uh, even the skeptics about this, or the, those that hold different opinion, they still believe that it, uh, Isa salam, Zakaria salam, Yahya salam, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam definitely visited this area. And even if you don't go by any of the other prophets, even if they deny that they lived in this area, the one thing that definitely happened, which cannot be denied, is that all the prophets came and prayed here. Right? So that's a, a very big deal. 124,000 uh, prophets, possibly around that number, to have prayed in this entire, on this entire land. Obviously, this masjid would be very small for 124,000, meaning just this current masjid at the front. So it would probably have to be this entire land uh, where, where it was. Moving on, there's a hadith that's uh, related by Imam Hakim, which is Sahih. Sahih. It's from Abu Dharr radiallahu anhu. He says, تَذَاكَرْنَا وَنَحْنُ عِنْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَيُّهُمَا أَفْضَلْ مَسْجِدُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَوْ مَسْجِدُ بَيْتِ الْمَقْدِسِ We were once discussing by the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم whether Masjid of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم in Medina Munawwara was superior or this place, which had more virtue, Baytul Maqdis, the two. So Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, Salatun fi masjidi hadha afdal min arba'i salawatin fihi. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, just to clarify the significance of prayer, said that the Salat in his masjid, which is in Medina Munawwara, was four times superior to the prayer here. Four times as much superior. Wala musalla. And what a beautiful place of prayer. Then he said something very interesting, which is so 
perfectly fitting for this time at least is wala yushikanna an yakuna lirajul mithla shatni farasihi min al-ard haythu yara minhu bayt al-maqdis khayrun lahu min ad-dunya jami'an aw qala khayrun min ad-dunya wa ma fiha which is that soon can will come a time soon there will be a state uh, soon will come a time when for a person to even have as much as the rope of his horse that much area of land of the of the earth from which he can just see the baytul maqdis that would be superior to him than the dunya and everything inside it for a person to possess or own just as much amount, which is probably what a few uh, a, a foot or something, a centimeter, a few centimeters of the the rope of one's animal. That's if they possessed even that much, then that would be valued more than the world. And that is exactly the state of the Jerusalemites today. Those who live here will not move, even if they're offered twenty thousand, uh, twenty million, in fact, for a you know for a for a room or for their home or whatever the case is. It's just the value of it is. Is just so amazing, and the difficulty, as you know, the difficulty of even coming here, possessing something and owning something is a whole uh, different story. So that's what I wanted to start with from with this hadith, which I felt uh, really explained what this was all about. Now, uh, Yaqut al Hamawi, who is this great scholar who wrote uh, a book on Mu'jam al Buldan, the dictionary of cities. So any Muslim name of cities that you've read in classical Arabic. Islamic literature, whether mentioning the Quran or the Sunnah, or even afterwards from you know the great places that our uh, great scholars of the past came from. Mashallah, uh, when he died in 626 Hijri, which is about 1229 Gregorian, until his time, you you probably will not find anything missing in his book. It's one of the best go-to books if you wanna. For example, you've heard a strange name like uh, Allama Sarakhsi. So where's Sarakhs? You'd go to his book and he'll explain exactly where this place was, what it was, the main ideas about this, and which great scholars came from this place. So, you know, Medina, Mecca, Mukarramah, we know these places anyway, but even some strange names. You take Hama, Halab, Nablus, whatever, any of these, even the strangest names in Khurasan and so on. So he writes that the word Muqaddas, Al Muqaddas, Al Baytul Muqaddas means purified. Purified. That's why they say holy. It actually means purified. The meaning of glorify your holy name. Nuqaddisuka. Nuqaddisuka, when we say that to Allah, because Allah is the Quddus, it means He's the glorified one, the purified one, the one beyond any defects. And that's why this Baytul Maqdis means the home or the house of purity. The house of purity. So inshallah, we're here, our hearts will be purified by inshallah being in the house of purity. Uh, uh, one of the ways of our great elders is that whenever you see a good connotation of something, a good meaning of something, then you make a dua appropriate to that. So when you hear that this is Baytul Maqdis, the home of purity, then you make a dua, may Allah grant us purity, a life of purity, because we're in the home of purity. And that's where, now where does the word Masjid Al-Aqsa come from? I'll tell you a little story about that. Once, uh, while I was an Imam in America, once there was a, a new, uh, a non-Muslim that came along and he had a few questions. And, you know, Masjid Al-Aqsa is constantly in the Muslim discourse today. Everybody speaks about it. So he asked, uh, I've read the whole Quran and Masjid Al-Aqsa is not mentioned in the Quran. And I said, of course it's mentioned in the Quran. It's in the beginning of the Surah Al-Isra, beginning of 15th Subara, you know. He says, no, it's not mentioned. I've read the entire Quran. I said, which Quran did you read? Because I'm half is of the Quran, this is the verse. So he says, obviously he read a translation. So we, I asked him which translation it was, and it was Abdullah Yusuf Ali's translation. Generally a decent translation. It has some issues in it. But so we picked up the copy and yes, it said in there, uh, glorify, uh, glorified be the one who took his servant from the, I forget his translation for Masjid al-Haram. He actually translates Masjid al-Haram from the uh, glorified, uh, sorry, from the sacred precinct, I think he says, to the furthest precinct, Aqsa, furthest precinct. He says there's no Masjid al-Aqsa. So what Abdullah Yusuf Ali has done is he's translated Masjid Aqsa. Masjid means the place of sajda 
or religious precinct. Aqsa means the furthest. The reason they called it Al Masjid Al Aqsa is because for the Arabs, uh, uh, for, for people in Makkah, Mukarramah, Medina, Munawwara, this was the only other masjid that was known and it was distance away. Because you know, this, hadith, uh, th this masjid was originally built 40 years after the Kaaba was originally built. Now, who built the first Kaaba or this place first? There's a difference of opinion which we'll be going into later. But just to give you an idea, some say it was angels who built the first, uh, first uh, haram in Makkah and it was the angels then who probably made the first. Otherwise, it was Adam alayhi salam and then who 40 years later built this place or one of his sons built this. Nobody knows for sure though. Nobody knows for sure. So we'll look at that a bit later. But that's why it's called Masjid Al-Aqsa, the distant mosque because it's so distant. That's why a lot of the people here, the most famous title they give it is Al-Quds. Quds comes from Quddus, the same Maqdis, purity. This is a place of purity. That's the idea. Now, if we look at uh, Muqatil ibn Sulaiman, Muqatil ibn Sulaiman died in 150 Hijri. So much earlier, uh, he was, uh, I, I believe he was from the Tabi'in or after the time of one of the major Mufassirin of the Quran. He writes, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ وَلُوطًا إِلَى الْأَرْضِ الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا لِلْعَالَمِينَ Which means, but we delivered him, meaning we delivered Ibrahim and his nephew Lut alayhi salam to the land which we have blessed for all beings. He means Jerusalem. So he thought it was Jerusalem. As I said that there is a, a new line of inquiry and idea that that was not Jerusalem. And that was maybe Hadramaut or somewhere else or whatever the case is, that still needs to be studied. But this is what the Mufassirin have been saying for many, many centuries. Uh, number two, he also says that when Allah says in the Quran, Again, we made the son of Mary and his mother as a sign. We gave them both shelter and high ground, afforded rest and security and furnished them with water springs. He says that was Jerusalem. Number three, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi laylam min al-masjid al-haram, that is for certain Jerusalem. As we've discussed al-masjid al-aqsa, that one nobody doubts that aspect. Then there's another ayah, uh, Surah Nur, fi buyutin adhin Allahu an turfa'a. وَيُذْكَرَ فِي هَسْمُهُ يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ فِيهَا بِالْغُدُوِّ وَالْآصَالِ رِجَالٌ رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْعٌ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِيْتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ يَخَافُونَ And it's a wonderful verse. It says that these are the homes or houses in which Allah has permitted to be raised and His name to be commemorated therein. Therein glorifying him in the morning and evening are men whom neither commerce nor trafficking diverts from the remembrance of Allah. And that's why literally in this place, you will actually see a lot of these people, they're here just to protect this masjid. They're here just to fulfill the rights of this masjid. You know, if you come 10 years ago, you come 10 years later, those are the people who will be here and they have dedicated themselves. As you can see, it's not easy for people to come and pray here. You know, you're probably wondering why it's, you only get 100 people for one salat. Whereas we've come from so far, there's so many people who come spending so much money and hassle and so on to come and pray here. And then the locals, there's 35,000 Palestinians here, you know, just in, the local, uh, just in the old city, among which the majority, 98% are Muslim. So where are they? Well, if you have to come for every prayer and your work, and you know, you're going to pray in your local mosque. There are other small masajid. To come here, you need 15 minutes, good 15 minutes to come in. You know, it's just like Makkah, Mukarram, Madina, Munawwara. But then there are still people who, as you can see, they will be coming for every prayer and women, subhanAllah, as well. So that, that this is, inshallah, part of this verse as well. There's a number of other verses as well in Surah Al-A'raf. وَبَارَكْنَا فِيهَا وَأَوْرَثْنَا الْقَوْمَ الَّذِينَ كَانُوا يُسْتَضَعَفُونَ مَشَارِقَ الْأَرْضِ وَمَغَارِبِهَا الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا We made those who had been oppressed succeed to both the, uh, succeed to both the east and the west of the land that we had blessed. Your Lord's good promise, uh, promise to the children of Israel was fulfilled. Then in Surah Ma'idah, you have another verse. يَا قَوْمْ أُدْخُلُوا الْأَرْضَ الْمُقَدَّسَةَ الَّتِي كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَلَا تَرْتَدُّوا عَلَىٰ أَدْبَارِكُمْ فَتَنْقَلِبُوا خَاسِرِينَ My people, 
This is uh, who? Musa salam, saying, My people, go into the holy land which God has ordained for you. Do not turn back or you will be the losers. Now, remember, it does say Al Ard Al Muqaddasa. It doesn't say Jerusalem. It doesn't say Quds. But it says Muqaddasa. But this is where they have the room to deny that this is Jerusalem. Do you understand? <clears throat> Abu Dhar Al Ghifari radiallahu Now, let's look at some hadith. Abu Dhar Al Ghifari radiallahu anhu. He says that I asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which was the first mosque to be built on the earth. The very famous hadith the Prophet sallallahu said the sacred masjid of Makkah. So then I asked him what was next? What was the second masjid? Thereupon he replied the masjid in Jerusalem with a period of 40, days, uh, 40 years in between. So Allah gave command. Now who was the first to build it? That's nobody knows exactly. Some say it was the angels that built it first. Then Adam Islam also had a hand in it. Some say it was just Adam Islam who built it. Ibrahim Islam definitely built Masjid al-Haram. No doubt about it. But if you look in the Quran, it says, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُوا, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُوا إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلِ When Ibrahim and his son Ismail والسلام, were raising from the foundations. So, that gives us an understanding that they were not necessarily building a whole new place from the foundations. The masjid had been built, Masjid Al-Aqsa, uh, Masjid Al-Haram for sure, uh, had been built by the angels or the uh, Prophet Adam alayhi salam before. After that, it had been destroyed or worn out and become desolate. Walls had fallen, but the base was still there. So what Ibrahim alayhi salam was told to do was to raise it again from its foundations. So that is the hadith uh, related in Muslim. Now let's look at the virtues of the prayer. People have been asking about how much reward you get here. So there are a number of hadith about this. Uh, there's reports ranging from 250 for every prayer, 250 <coughs> times the reward, to 500 to 1,000. And some say 250 is the strongest and a lot of the Saudi scholars say 250 is the strongest opinion. However, others, they give it much more. So let me go through the hadith. Abu Darda radiallahu anhu relates that As-salatu fil masjid al-haram bi mi'ati alfi salatin. Salat in masjid al-haram is a hundred thousand equivalents. One hundred thousand. Wa salat fi masjidi bi alfi salatin. And salat in my masjid, which is uh, Medina Munawwara, is a thousand. So 100,000 and 1,000 according to this narration. Was salat fil bayt al maqdis is half of a thousand. It's a bi khamsi mi'ati salat in 500. So this is the one you got a, a higher rate in this one. Imam Bazzar and Tabarani have related this hadith with a sound chain. Sound chain. Abu Dhar radiallahu anh, relates another hadith from Hakim and Dara Qutni who have related it. Salatun fi masjidi hadha afdal min arba'i salawatin fi bayt al-maqdis. The Prophet is saying that in my masjid, salat is four times superior to the salat in bayt al-maqdis. So that's where they get, if you've got uh, salat in masjid, al, uh, in masjid al-nabawi, to be how much according to the previous hadith? 1,000. So quarter of that will be 250. So this is where they get the 251 from. Because you know that 1,000 in Medina, Munawwara, so two, 250 here. Another one <coughs> is related by Ibn Majah, Abu Dawood, and Imam Ahmad from <coughs> Maymuna bintu Sa'd, radiallahu anha. As-salatu fihi ta'dilu alfa salatin fi ghayrihi. This one's giving you a higher rate. A thousand prayers, like salat in any. This place holds reward of a thousand. So this one is... Uh, 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 high, uh, high in that sense. Then you've got another one, which is there's other hadith, uh, a lot more. However, what we're going to uh, that's a, uh, a bit of a weak hadith anyway. So as I said there's even beyond uh, beyond uh, a thousand, but there's a hadith also that says a hundred equivalent to a hundred prayers. It's also possible that the Prophet ﷺ was told one thing, uh, he learnt one thing through the wahi first, that it's this much, then he mentioned, then he learned that no, it's actually more than that, so then he mentioned another hadith. Either way, there's a huge amount of reward that's here. You know, 250, which is the minimum, alhamdulillah. 1,000, alhamdulillah. 
you know, whatever the case is. Then of course you get that multiplied with the jama'ah, right? The fact that it's jama'ah, that's 27 times, 25 times extra anyway, right? And then, and then so on, all of that gets multiplied. Imam Iraqi, Allama Iraqi, he has said that basically the, mas uh, the, the hadith would say 1,000 prayers, he goes with that one. So that's, we'll leave it there. There's a hadith that's related from Abdullah ibn Fayruz al daylami from Amr ibn Aas radiallahu anhu. He says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Sulaiman ibn Dawood. He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for three things. <clears throat> He was given two of those things immediately. Or he was given two of those things. And I hope the Prophet is saying that he be also be given the third thing. He asked him for a kingdom like no other. And he was given that. He then asked him for a judgment, you know, the ability to make a judgment that was similar to the judgment of Allah, meaning getting it right. That's why Sulaiman Alaihissalam's judgments in a number of cases were more correct than even his father Dawud Alaihissalam's judgments. There's a number of stories about that. For example, there's one famous story that a woman, two women started fighting over a child. One of them had lost her child and there was another child who both of them started fighting over that child, that this is my child, this is my child. I mean, you might be wondering how you could mistake your child. Well, I mean, don't children get mistaken in hospitals nowadays? and only to be discovered 10 years later, 15 years sometimes later, right? So it's a possibility. So they both go with this discussion to Dawood alayhi salam. Dawood alayhi salam, he gave a decision for one of them. But then when they went to Sulaiman alayhi salam, Sulaiman alayhi salam said, you know what, I'm just going to split this child into two and make it half off. Now, clearly that sounds like a very cruel decision. But no, this is just to weed out the truth. You have to say some things like this just to weed out the truth. So he says, I'm going to sacrifice this child or cut it in half. You get half and you get half. So immediately the younger one, she said, no, 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 no. It's her child. Give it to her. Then he realized that it must be her child, the younger ones, because she was more concerned for this child that I'd rather have a living child somewhere in the world than a half a child that's dead. So he said, okay, it must be yours. And he gave it to her. So the Prophet ﷺ said that I hope this third dua of his, and what was that dua of his? His dua was that he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Man ata al bayt, yuridu bayt al maqdis. Now in this hadith, it says yuridu bayt al maqdis, which gives the proof that Sulaiman was in bayt al maqdis. Right? So anyway, whoever comes to this, Masjid, meaning Baytul Maqdis, La Yuridu illa Salat fihi. And the only intention he has for coming here is to have salah, is to pray salat in it. Min ummu. Then inshallah he will come away from his sins just like the day his mother gave him birth. Something similar to an accepted hajj. <coughs> so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa then said, Wa arju an yakuna qad a'tahu thalitha. I also hope that he has been given this third uh, wish or this third dua has been accepted. Imam Nasai has related this hadith. And so has Ibn Majah and Ibn Hibban and Ibn Khuzayma in their Sahih and Al Hakim in his Mustadrak. Um, number of scholars have said that this hadith is a Sahih hadith. So uh, that is why it mentions that Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu used to come here for you salli fihi wa la yashab fihi ma. He would come here, he would not even drink water that was available. You know, we saw that sabil. A sabil means a pathway. The reason they call it uh, sabil uh, could be a number of reasons. One is a pathway of the water, or it could mean Ibn sabil, that this is for the people who are walking past that they, uh, that, that they can get free water. He wouldn't drink any water here. And the reason is, he says that because la yuridu illa salat fihi, that people come here only for salat. And that means your niyyah should not be to do shopping. Alhamdulillah, you don't, it's not like other places where there's big malls and so on, right? So Alhamdulillah, in that sense, this is a very protected place. Unfortunately, Makkah, Mukarram, Madinah, Munawwara, despite their great glory, all the malls have slightly shifted focus. Get me two hij Cartier hijabs and, you know, get me this, that and the other and all the rest of it. But here, 
Subhanallah. The only thing you can do here is basically do this and maybe give sadaqah to the poor. Right? Maybe buy a few dates or something like that if you're lucky. Or olives. Right? But the, the focus, inshallah, needs to be this. And he says that no, they don't come here for any dunyawi reason and nor for any bid'ah reason. If you came here for any other reason, then all of our time at the airport and all the hassle was wasted. And if you came here for the masjid, then all of that, inshallah, is greater rewards. Alhamdulillah. This is the place in which Isa Islam spoke in the cradle. This is the place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised Isa Islam up. This is the place where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that if you're going to go specially to pray somewhere, I want to clarify this hadith for you. This is the most famous hadith that's related by Imam Muslim. Uh, it's very sahih. The Prophet sallallahu said that you should only saddle an animal. Anim animals should only be saddled for one of three masjids. What does that mean? Let's take London, for example, right? I mean, London, you've got a few famous mosques. And you say, you've got a local masjid, but you say, no, 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 I'm going to get more reward if I go to East London Mosque, or if I go to Regent's Park Mosque, or if I go to Masjid Quba in Stamford Hill, right? Or whatever, right? Uh, or Queen's Road or whatever the case is. If you go with that intention, I'll get more reward there and you leave your local masjid, then that's wrong. Your local masjid is you. Is you. That's who you are, right? And uh, that's who, what you should be populating your local jami, your local place of congregation on Friday. However, there are three masjids where you can actually go specifically, take a trip for it, and you will get more reward there. That's Masjid Al-Hara, Masjid Al-Aqsa, and uh, uh, Masjid Nabawi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's what, this is the one masjid the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi spoke about. Ka'ab uh, uh, is quoted as saying that the, all the Prophets visited Jerusalem out of veneration. And again, Allah knows best exactly that, but we know that from the hadith about Mi'raj that they came on that, on that day. It says the Prophet ﷺ came here, tied his horse, he made his two rak'ats, and then after that he sees behind him all of these prophets, and they're all waiting there, and Jibreel ﷺ grabs him and makes him the imam. What a wonderful sight that must have been. What a wonderful state that must have been. In fact, it's related that when Umar ﷺ came here and he wanted to, this place was a dump at that time. The place that was inhabited, because it was inhabited by Christians at that time, it was the holy, the, the sepulchre uh, church, which we're going to go to tomorrow. Right? We're going to look at that tomorrow, inshallah. And that's where in front of it is the Masjid Umar. Because uh, he wanted to pray. So the, the priest or whoever he was said, pray in the church. And Umar refused. And I don't know why the priest was telling him to pray in that church, but he refused and for their own benefit. He says that if I prayed in this church, the Muslims that will come after me and say, Umar prayed here, khalas, we're taking this. So he prayed outside it by the doorstep. That's where they've made that Masjid Umar. Last time when I came here, 2008, we met the person who's in, who actually excavated it. The authorities were not letting them ex excavate it. There was a part of it that was there, but uh, they discovered a whole new area of it that was all filled up with something. But they couldn't do it. So at night time, in, uh, they would do it secretly, just take out the, the soil and all that and then get rid of it and now it's much bigger than it used to be before. He came here to look for the, this site and it was a dump. So he cleared out a way, he cleared out a place and he asked where shall we build, uh, where should we build something here, where we should we start off the masjid. Because the whole area is masjid but where shall we start it off. So this Kaab al-Ahbar was originally from the Jewish uh, uh, tribes who had become Muslim, well aware of their he was well aware of their traditions and everything like that. He gave an idea and he said, build it behind the, the, black st uh, behind the, the stone, behind the rock, Qubba, uh, the Sakhra, right? Behind the big rock. So that in that case, then you will also face towards Makkah and also face towards Masjid Laksa. Because if you do it from this end, this is the furthest end of the Masjid where we are. Right? This is the furthest end of the masjid where we are. Then there's no more masjid laksa beyond this. But if you do it down there, then you've got masjid laksa still in front of it, meaning a good area of it. So Umar Dinan said, that, no, you, you still got this other tradition. Right? I'm going to build it at the front. So that's why the foundation of this place was laid here. Otherwise, the masjid is the whole thing. Do you understand why this? So that's why you know people they keep saying, 
uh, when you put Qubba to Sahra, the beautiful building, because the architecture on there is one of the most wonderful pieces of architecture in the world. That's why even on our poster, we had that, and there was a number of people that kept tweeting me and saying, take this off, this is not Masjid Laksa, right? Uh, Masjid Laksa is the other building, and they've got it wrong. Yes, that's not Masjid Laksa, that's, it's called Qubba to Sahra in particular, but it is Masjid Laksa in general, right? Because they believe that there's a, a conspiracy to take out this, the focus of this building from the minds of Muslims. Whereas we've learned today from the archaeologists that the Qubba al is actually more valuable to the Jewish people than this place. In fact, they'd rather take that place and give this place to, to the Muslim, according to the archaeologists. So, as, as, uh, as the archaeologists mentioned, there's numerous uh, fallacies and things like that that go around anyway. Abdullah ibn Abbas is reported to have said that the sacred house was built by prophets and was inhabited by prophets. There is not even a space, even as small as a hand span, that has been uh, at least the site of a prayer uh, of a prophet or an angel. Dajjal, as you know, will not be able to enter Makkah, Mukarramah, and Medina, Munawwara. And he will not be able to enter Jerusalem. Right? At least, you know, within the certain area of Jerusalem. That's why it was very interesting is that it says that Isa salam will descend in Damascus, the, uh, the, the eastern minaret, which is a white minaret. And that is the one which is actually close to the Christian uh, side of Damascus. Right? It was on the opposite side of where I used to go and study. I was, used to study on the, on the right hand side. This is on the eastern side. It's been closed and locked. But that's where he will descend. Then he'll find out that the Jal has, the Jal would have been around, find out that the Jal has gone. And it says, in a, it says in a hadith that Dajjal will have a donkey whose wingspan will be this many cubits. A donkey with wings just didn't sound, doesn't make sense. But it makes sense today with the possibility that we're talking about a plane. And then it mentions very clearly that, Jibreel, uh, that Isa salam will kill Dajjal in the Babi Lud. Close to the gateway of Lud, the door of Lud. And the door of Lud... I don't know if you guys noticed when you came from the airport, the first area to come on your right, it says Lod or Lud, right? That is next to the airport, Ben Gurion International Airport. Possible there's a flight will be coming in. And Wallahu Alam, I'm just speculating here that this is the Jal will fly in his plane or whatever the case is, and that's where he will die. Uh, but we will be, inshallah, visiting Lud. This Babul Lud, this place, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a city, it's a small town. There's a Tablighi Markaz there as well, right? And uh, it's very close to the airport. It's like Hayes, um, you know, Hounslow, these areas uh, in London, close to the airport. Now, there's a number of other narrations, some Sahih, some not very Sahih. I'm just going to mention them to you, and I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not telling you that they're all Sahih. It says, for example, uh, it is also in Jerusalem that the trumpet will blow on the day of judgment. Uh, on the rock of Jerusalem, the caller will proclaim the day of judgment. There's numerous things that have, people have said, Allah knows best. Um, there is a hadith though, it says, Imranu Baytul Maqdis Kharabu Yathrib. Baytul Maqdis becoming inhabited will be the sign of Yathrib, which means Medina Munawwara becoming desolate. So, if you look at the signs of the Day of Judgment, a lot of them relate to this area. Because it talks about Makkah Mukarrah, the Kaaba being dismantled by Abyssinians or by Africans. It mentions that in a hadith. It mentions that Medina will become desolate. But for this area, it talks about a lot of things are going to happen here. Because Isa alayhi salam, he'll be able to kill the Jal. However, when Ya'juj Ma'juj come around, he won't be able to kill them. Then he will go, I believe it's Mount Sinai, and he'll make dua against them. And then Allah will cause them to all perish. So this area has a very... Otherwise, I don't see where the determination that you have in the people of this area, the, pr the pride and the determination, despite all the difficult... Can you imagine not having a citizenship? Having a temporary citizenship? Not being able to build on your house? Not being able to, you know, just trouble wherever you go, not having freedom of movement and still having that mashallah, that pride of who you are, what you are, subhanallah, 
there's something very special about this. They are protecting this place. That's basically what it is. It's an ajeeb, azam, ajeeb, him that the, the people have and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward, reward them uh, for that and grant them great understanding. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith of Muslim, he says, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu relates that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I saw myself in a big congregation of Anbiya prophets. فَإِذَا مُوسَى قَائِمْ There was Musa alayhi salam standing there. Yusalli, he was praying. فَإِذَا رَجُلٌ ضَرْبٌ جَعْدٌ He was of medium stature. He described, gave him some characteristics. كَأَنَّهُ مِنْ رِجَالِ شَنُوءَ It was as though he, were, he looked like a man from the Shanu'a tribe. The Shanu'a tribe was well known. So he, looks like, he looked like a man from the Shanu'a tribe. Then he said, وَإِذَا عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمْ and suddenly I saw Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam. Qa'imun yusalli. He was also praying, standing. Aqrabun nas bihi shabhan Urwa ibn Mas'ud. He said the closest person in resemblance to him is Urwa ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an. If you want to see Urwa ibn Mas'ud, he looks like Jesus, peace be upon him. And then he said, Wa idha Ibrahim. And suddenly there was Ibrahim alayhi salam. Qa'imun yusalli. He was also praying. Ashbahun nas bihi sahibukum. And the closest in resemblance to Ibrahim is yours truly. That's what he said. Sahibukum, meaning uh, your man, uh, the, the uh, Rasulullah sallallahu Because this is great, great grandson. Fahanat is salat. Then it was salat time. So maybe they were doing the sunnah, so whatever it was. Fahanat is salat. It came salat, salat time. Fa'ammamtuhum. And I led them in prayer. Hadith of Muslim. Um, there's a number of others that speak about that, that, that time. Then, as I said, there's a hadith from Maymuna, who was a, one of the slave girls of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She said, "Ya Rasulullah, aftina fi Baytul Maqdis. Tell us something about Baytul Maqdis. Give us some r ruling command about Baytul Maqdis. What should our approach be?" He said, "Ituhu fasallu bihi. Go to it and pray in it. Go to it and pray in it." It mentions that during that time there was obviously a, a war going on between the Romans. In the time of Rasulullah sallallahu it was the Romans that had uh, Bayt al-Maqdis, Jerusalem. There was a war. So you couldn't really go. Because you know Tabuk, the expedition of Tabuk was against the Romans. And the Prophet sallallahu had prepared this entire army with Usama ibn Zayd uh, radiallahu an. Uh, as its commander before he passed away. That was to the Romans to go in this direction. So there was a war at that time. So then the Prophet said, okay, فَإِلَّمْ تَأْتُوهُ If you can't go there, if you can't go there and, uh, and pray in it, then send some oil for its lamps. Now, Alhamdulillah, this place is being looked after. Alhamdulillah, it's being looked after. So what they generally say is that you can give to the poor of the area because that they, they need it as well. And this place is being looked after. So Alhamdulillah, that gives us an understanding. I'll just quote the last hadith. Uh, I'll quote the last hadith here, which is uh, related by Musnad Ahmad. We can't do it on this occasion, but in the future you can plan this, which is that um, Ummu Hakim, the daughter of Umayyah ibn al-Akhnas, relates from Ummu Salama radiallahu anha, a wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam saying, whoever wears their ihram, Whoever puts on their ihram for Umrah or Hajj from Masjid Al-Aqsa, he will be forgiven. All of his past sins will be forgiven. That's why you have numerous people who come here. I have a friend, a classmate who's been coming here for the last 10, 15, 20 years maybe. And he comes here and they put their ihram here and they say, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik and go out of the city. What a wonderful sight. So maybe sometimes you can do this. Uh, inshallah, you, you, can, you can do this. That's why there's a number of people who did this. For example, Ibn Umar radiallahu anh, is related to have come here to put his ihram on. And he went from here. Imran ibn Hussein, uh, who was originally from Basra. Ibn Abbas from Sham. Ibn Mas'ud from Qadisiyah, close to Kufa. They came here and then from here they went for Umrah or Hajj. So that's inshallah on another occasion. But uh, that is basically uh, the hadith and the Quranic verses about it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the blessings of this place.